Hi there, I'm Black Bright, I'm broadcasting out the UK. If it's the first time to my channel, please subscribe if you like what I say, share if you think somebody else could benefit from it, and like if you like it. Anyway, um, thank you all of my subscribers and thank you for following me and thank you for your comments. I know you don't always agree with what I say, but that's fine. That's what this forum is about. It's about people having their opinions, sharing their opinions and so forth. Um, yeah, I was recently reading an article about the Home Office and the Home Office apparently have been um, detaining trafficked victims. Now, traffic victims is not um, a term we come across in our daily lives. Well, not very often for some of us, maybe for most of us. But a traffic victim is someone who's been brought over from usually from another country, even though it happens indigenously, even though it happens in the country that we're in. But a lot of the times people have been exporting people into the country or importing them. And um, under the guise that they will find them work and they will, um, and, but they have to surrender their passport. So they get these people and they say, look, you've got an opportunity in the UK, um, you come over with us, I'm going to get you a job, we'll find you somewhere to live. What invariably happens is they bring these people over, sometimes from Romania, sometimes from Poland. Um, it could be from Africa, it could be from anywhere. But they're vulnerable people usually, or people who are looking for a break, or people who just believe what the human trafficker is saying. Once they get them on the boat, once they get them here, they say that they've got to um, surrender their passports so that they can get them false ID. And they give them a couple of shekels to keep them sweet. And then from that time, it's a downhill. They've got no paperwork. They can't get a job. They um, put them under forced labour conditions. I don't know if you've seen any of it on TV. A lot of the time they live in places like cages. They're beaten. They're treated abominably. They're made to work and they either don't get any pay or they get minute pay. And these gangs, you know, the police are trying to round up these gangs who are carrying out human trafficking. And it really is unfortunate. I mean, on a, on a low scale or a scale you wouldn't believe that is human trafficking. In the West Indies, you have situations where parents, especially mothers who are hard up, they will offer up their children to stepfathers um, in turn for money. Or they'll give them over to carers in term for, you know, in exchange for money. And that's another form of child trafficking. You're offering up your child, your daughter, for, um, for money so that, he, so that she can be sexually exploited. I don't know if it happens with boys. It could well do. I don't know. But this is what happens. And it's so unfortunate. How do you tell someone's been trafficked? Normally, they're always accompanied. Um, they usually um, don't speak for themselves. The person who they're with speaks for them. Sometimes they look a bit jittery. Sometimes they've got um, wounds that need attention, but they haven't been attended to. Um, they sometimes look dirty. They look a bit um, frightened. I mean... It's very difficult. I, I actually did a human trafficking edition of Black Bright. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever have been to my site. Um, it's Black Bright. It's a human trafficking edition. Um, I did it quite a while ago. I put on this, um, this conference in Bedfordshire um, about human trafficking. It was attended by the police, border force. It was attended by nurses, um, so the Good Samaritan Salvation Army, it was attended by so many people and it was really successful and they reckoned it was one of the first of its kind um, in the area. Anyway, um, if you want to look on it, it's a free It's free to look at. It's www.issueu.com forward slash Black Bright News. If I can find that particular edition quickly, uh, before I go to work, then I will 
add it to the link um but yes so getting back to the home office now which is the t the topic of this video the thing is with human traffic victims they are supposed to be protected and they're supposed to have a safe place to live they're supposed to get psychological help because they have something um they develop this um feeling that they need to protect the perpetrator and they a lot of them they don't give themselves up to the police a lot of times it's because they're scared a lot of times it's because they feel as though they don't know where to go or they don't know what to do so when immigration pick them up the ones that have been brought over from, from abroad technically they are illegal immigrants the only difference is is that they've come over under wrong under a uh, wrong under false pretenses that's the word i was looking for they've come over under false pretenses and whilst they they've given money to come over here to work to give money to a third party they must know that it's illegal but i don't understand why these people pay these traffickers so much money when it would be cheaper to get a plane but I guess it's because that these people are saying that they're going to give them jobs and going to find them somewhere to live. And then they shove them all on this boat. Half of them drowned or whatever. It's really quite tragic. So, uh, and a lot of these traffickers, they, they know who to target. But anyway, I'm, I'm going off the point. So what's happening now is the immigration officials are finding these traffic victims and what the argument is is that they need psychological help they've been abused they've been tormented and they they're totally ill so they have no business being in a detention center so now i get back to the article which i am going to share with you the Home Office illegally puts trafficking victims in detention centres, the report finds. Ministers are accused of prioritising immigration control over survivors' right to support and of breaching their responsibility to assist them in their physical and psychological recovery under European law. A report by the Labour Exploitation Advisory Group, LEAG, highlights cases where the government has identified immigration detainees as trafficked victims, but have maintained their detention despite vulnerabilities. The Home Office has knowingly held victims of modern slavery in removal centres in what experts say is a breach of the law. The Independent, this is the newspaper, this is where I got it from, The Independent can reveal. In some cases, detention has been used to supposedly safeguard trafficking victims, according to the report by a group of charities. Law enforcement agencies often refer them to removal centres as a way to protect them from returning to an exploitative situation, despite the traumatising effects it can have said the Labour Exploitation Advisory Group, which supports trafficking victims. The thing is, I can understand this on the one hand, because trafficked victims, they're like pimps. You know, the, the, the people who traffic them, they're like pimps. And they beat them and they make, force them to give them back. They, they force them to give them the money they've earned if they send them out as, as prostitutes or whatever. And so on the one hand, by putting them in detention, it is protecting them from the traffickers because if the traffickers get hold of them, they're finished. So I can understand it from the one point, but there again, they, these children or these adults need psychological help because they've been beaten, they've been abused, and they've had real hard time. So a lot of them, they have got to get that kind of help, but they wouldn't get that in the detention centre because it doesn't cater for that. The charity said that this was a breach of the UK's responsibility under European law to help modern slavery survivors recover physically, psychologically and socially. The group accu accused ministers of prioritising immigration controls. Said that twice. Separate figures obtained by the Scottish Refugee Council through, a, through the Freedom of Information Act request that 
Well, oh, sorry, let me read that again. Requested separate figures obtained by the S Scottish Refugee Council through a Freedom of Information request back these findings. 255 people confirmed as modern slavery survivors by the National Referral Mechanism, the Home Office Framework for Identifying Victims, were placed in removal centres between 2016 and 2018. Yeah, this National Referral Mechanism is an organisation which, if you're a trafficked victim, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to report to them. If you haven't reported to them, you don't get no help. No housing, nothing. They're the people who kind of monitor it. But it's not that straightforward, of course. I think a lot of traffic victims are a bit worried about reporting themselves and goodness knows what. So they so they don't get everybody in there. Some people don't even know about it. 56 of these individuals, so 56 out of the 255, were identified as victims before being detained and 10 were identified while in detention and remained locked up, according to data. In one case, highlight, and the thing is, is that they could, there are places for trafficked victims that they could actually refer them back to if they know that they're victims. But what, they're, what the problem is, is that the Home Office is keeping them detained as illegal immigrants, as opposed to traffic victims. And that's where this disparity lies. In one case highlighted in the report, the Home Office maintained the detention of a man after he was identified as a potential victim by the National Referral Mechanism on the grounds that his entitlements, which are supposed to include safe house, accommodation and financial support, could be met in detention. See, what they're saying now is that even if they find out that they're trafficked, if they put them in detention, then they then qualify for this safe house accommodation and financial support. So there's always loopholes, there's always ways to get around these things. The LEAG said a lack of any appropriate mechanism to identify victims of trafficking in detention, as well as the Home Office's desire to effect swift removal from the UK, meant trafficked Trafficking indicators were being missed or ignored, preventing timely identification. The thing is, when um, police pick up people who they identify as illegal immigrants, they're not really trained to identify human trafficking victims. A lot of them don't really know much about it. And unless they attend the workshops that help them identify traffic victims, they're not going to know. A lot of these people, number one, they're intimidated. Number two, English is their second language. They don't speak it very well. Number three, they're extremely vulnerable because of the way that they've been exploited, lied to. So if a police holds them and they can't speak the language properly, the police are bound to think that they are just people who have got into the country well, they have got into the country illegally, but their circumstances are different from somebody who has deliberately come into the country to um, exploit the system. I don't believe that these people believe that they are exploiting the system. Traffic victims are led to believe that they can work legally in the country and a house will be provided for them under the guise that they end up on these fields or they end up in meat factories working their butts off, not getting paid. A lot of them, when they get their money, it's taken away because it's to cover housing. And then they're put in these houses that have about six beds in one room. Everything about the whole system is illegal, immoral and degrading. Anyway, the group also said that the Home Office failure to publish data on potential victims of human trafficking in detention highlighted last week by The Independent, reduced transparency around their identification and obstructed evidence-based policy making. The report criticises the Home Office's adults at risk policy introduced in 2000 and 2016 to reduce the number of vulnerable people in detention, saying it serves to maintain detention in the vast majority of cases where a detainee is accepted as vulnerable 
as vulnerability factors were regularly outweighed by immigration control factors. Home Office forced to defend refusal to disclose detention of hundreds of modern slavery victims. So it looks like they've got lots of them in the detention centres. I'm not quite sure how they get around that, really. But like I said, they do. If they know that they're um, victims of modern slavery, they should really put them in the appropriate place so that they can get attention, so that they can get rehabilitation. Detention centre is just where people are detained. It's got no uh, mechanisms for this kind of support. Um, in 2018, the Home Office maintained detention in 78% of the cases where someone was identified as vulnerable, according to this research. 78%! That's a high percentage. In response to the findings, 10... But the thing is, I don't even know why they're in detention centres, because these people don't have papers. Their passports and everything have been taken away, so I don't even know where they're going to send them to, how long they keep them in there for, and what they do with them. In response to finding, 10 organisations, including Charity Anti-Slavery International and law firm Duncan Lewis Public Law, have announced the launch of a new task force that will seek to end the detention of modern slavery victims and will advocate for vital changes to government policy. In a joint statement, the organisation said, members believe that immigration, detention, should play no part in a progressive and fair immigration system. Until this is realised, the Home Office must immediately strengthen and implement its own guidance to ensure that no victim of human trafficking is ever detained. Home officers are apparently accused of lying about detention of trafficking victims. Emily Kenway, senior advisor at Focus on Labour Exploitation, which is in brackets flex, um, which is also part of the new task force, said locking people up when they experienced trauma of being trafficked was clearly at odds with the government's own aim of reducing harm to its victims. She said there is a conflict of interest in the fact that the Home Office was dually responsible for immigration enforcement and tackling modern slavery, adding, this leads to cases like those exposed today where victims are treated as offenders and the immigration status is prioritised over their right to support. And that's a problem, you know, um, Human trafficking victims are often treated as offenders and as criminals, and that's why they don't want to report their traffickers. They look, they, you know, they try, they're encouraged. You have all these flyers going around with, if you're a traffic victim, report it to the police or whatever. But a lot of the times, um, evidence has shown that the police treat them as criminals and as though they're in complicit in what's been what's happened to them and a lot of times some of them are complicit through naivety through ignorance and another time and other people they're forced you know their parents have been um their parents have been blackmailed or beaten or forced to release their children or whatever it is there's a lot of it is like it is like slavery that's why they call it modern slavery they force the people out of the homes and some, okay, some of them pay to come here, but some of them are forced out of their homes. They're taken from their, their parents and brought to another country and made to work for no money or very, very little. And then a lot of them, they have this, um, they have this fee. So they'll say, okay, you can come over free. But, and we'll get a job for you and we'll get, give you somewhere to live. And so what happens is when they come over, all their salary, well, it's not even a salary, all their wages go back to the trafficker. And they'll say, oh, this is to pay for your travel and this is to pay for where you live. Even if they're living, they're living in dumps, they travelled on substandard um, tra modes of travel. And yet this is what they're paying, all their salary. So they don't get anything and then they can't look after themselves. So what they thought was a dream has turned out to be a nightmare. Um, Pierre Macouf, Assistant Director at BAIL, B-A-I, 
Bail for Immigration Detainees, BID, which is also a member of the task force, said the charity repeatedly saw vulnerable people refused bail, despite the Home Office's guidance intended to protect adults at risk in detention. The government, the government must review its approaches to these cases so that the, so the needs and the rights of those who are victims of human trafficking are protected. It should never need saying that no survivor of the human rights abuse of slavery, trafficking or exploitation should be in detention. But this data exposes that it does needs to be said. Survivors need recovery and never detention. The Home Office must end this practice now. A Home Office spokesperson said the government, the government is committed to protecting the vulnerable and treating those in detention with dignity and respect. This includes identifying and supporting victims of modern slavery. But what does the Home Office know? The Home Office put these people in private detention centres. They don't know what's going on. It's not a government-run institution. And even then, some government-run institutions can be questionable. But these people are placed into private, where these private um, detention centres are raking it in. They're, you know, I hear that they're not, some people are not allowed out. They don't see the light of day for like 21 hours. Their food is crap. They're all bunged in. They're not. Re they're not getting any kind of. Um, what are they? What they say? They're committed to protecting the vulnerable. What is their definition of protecting the vulnerable? If their protect. If their definition of protecting the vulnerable is to take them out of that situation, okay, out of the trafficking situation, and put them in a detention centre, then that could be one concept. Of protecting them because you're protecting them from one ill but then you're placing them in another ill especially if they're not getting treatment oh, I don't know there, there's just so many ways around it and so many ways of looking at these things anyway I've talked on long enough have a pleasant day and don't forget to subscribe if you like the channel by clicking the bell icon and that's all for now bye